Well, that's a little bit more uh, FR4 cut for another client, so uh, I hope he's happy with that. I thought um, I'd give you a quick video today, just as I'm getting a lot of inquiries for FR4 cutting. So I thought I'd put a short document together just to try and assist you designers out there to understand the principles of taking a 2D or 3D designed mini cord or any other part or project of how that gets converted into CNC data like uh, th this design on the screen here. It's not a very complicated process but the problems I'm experiencing when I'm receiving files from around the world is the way files are get converted. Now it doesn't actually happen too badly if I'm receiving files from designated CAD programs like Autodesk, um, AutoCAD, Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks, etc. etc. It's more so when the um, and there's nothing wrong with this, like the back shed uh, designer, which I'm getting some fantastic designs from people that are working in their sheds, their back bedrooms, absolutely fantastic what you're doing. But you're using programs like Adobe Illustrator and things like that, which aren't actually designed for really two-dimensional drawing. So when it gets converted to me in a DXF file, which is our native sort of interchangeable file format, Errors are cropping up and we're spending time talking on email, Skyping one another, sending back back and forth PDFs. So I thought I'd put a document together to try and smooth the way for, for designers. So it's a, a PDF, it's going to be linked onto the, this page somehow. Um, and it's just going to cover very, very simple things like circles, lines, polylines, splines, arcs, layering what happens if lines don't touch one another DXF format in dog boning now you, that may be a new expression for a lot of you out there but I'm going to explain to you that if you start wanting to assemble parts i.e. you've got one flat part here and you've got another flat part there normally in between we'd have some uh, nylon or aluminium standoffs and as long as your holes in the top plate and the bottom plate are aligned when you bolt the spaces in everything fits and that, that's that's very easy to do and no real tolerances are involved it gets a little bit more tricky when we start to assemble flat parts so let's say uh, bottom plate top plate and on the front here you're going to have a FPV camera so you've got a, a small board camera which needs a square plate fitted in between the two plates. So what that means you've got to do is you've got to drill two slots possibly in the bottom plate, two slots in the top plate. On the square that you would insert in between the two you need two tongues and they need to fit together. It's not a difficult job but I'm just going to explain to you from your 2D designs which you may be using square corners, internal corners and that's another point I'm going to cover is a CNC router can't cut square internal corners. Uh, it can cut square external corners, although I don't advise using them because they can be very, very sharp to the touch. And um, any square uh, intersection or change of direction can be a weak point in your design. And that's all covered in the, in the document I'm producing. Um, so dog boning, I explain what that is, and that's just how I'm taking your normally 2D design, transferring it into um, G-code, which the, the Mac 3 uh, CNC program understands, and that's how I end up cutting your design. So the document, oh, I don't know what it is. It's, it's going to be a work in progress file. So as I receive more files from around the world, and I, en I encounter more problems in taking data from numerous programs, as they crop up, I'm going to add to this document and and just to try and let you guys know the problems that I'm encountering. And if I'm encountering the problems, what that does, it, it's, it's extending the time I need to spend on the files you're sending me. So it's increasing your production cost. So I thought it would be a good idea to try and explain to you things that, whilst you're designing, that 
perhaps you can think about that will make your design easier to transfer over and get it CNC cut and perhaps there's things in my document that you haven't thought about which may make your time designing slightly easier so I'm going to cut away now there's going to be a link say somewhere down the bottom down there somewhere it's going to be a PDF have a read it's going to be around 10 pages there's some pictures we're talking about filleting and very nice to have features because the problem with like using SolidWorks there's no problem using SolidWorks it's a very very good program is it's very very easy whilst you're designing to put some very nice to have features in your design like um, filleting every corner uh, and if you've got if you're doing a 3d type model if you've got faces merging into one another that you're filleting between two faces and if you don't understand that read the document and it'll become clear uh, and also a major um, subject I'm going to cover is trying to avoid having your part machined on both sides it sounds very easy to do and it's not difficult but it takes time and normally I have to make an additional jig to hold your part now what I mean in there is and it's explained in the document is say we're cutting a mini quad frame for an example uh, basically that's cut from let's say the bottom plate may be 2mm uh, FR4 if you can have the cut the, the, the your design cut using a standard CNC router bit which could be one two three mil generally I like to use three mil because they're very cost effective they cut quickly so that reduces your production time if your design can be cut purely from the top so I've got a big sheet of material on my CNC router table I load in your CAD file like there's there's one here of a um, what's this this is a camera mount going on a DJI 450 or 550 can't quite remember um, if I'm able to cut your design in one go I from my big sheet material I can if I have to use various tools I tool change which is no problem but there's obviously a time and setup in doing that so it slightly increases the, the cut time but if I can cut your design from a large sheet material purely from the top it's very very easy it's quick and it's a cheap production cost method if you've designed a frame and this is where um, so to say SolidWorks or 3d uh, type design package doesn't help you sometimes it's very easy to add a feature on the underside of the plate now let, let me explain say you've got a standard uh, bottom plate of a, an aircraft and you've cut it but on the underside you've decided you wanted a, a slot in the material going across so what that means is once the once the part has been cut from the big sheet material and on my machine I have a vacuum hold down so it's no problem holding parts bigger than generally about 50 mil square the vacuum can hold it down to the table and as the machines cutting around as the machine cuts the last part the part I'm cutting out for you stays stuck to the table because of the vacuums holding it down. Any smaller parts than that, it tends to break free and instead of getting a nice smooth edge on the cut, the tool doesn't cut quite cut properly or cuts into the part that I've just made for you. And I'm gonna do another video on how I CNC smaller parts for you. Um, but then what I have to do, it, I have to take that part I've just cut for you and now let's say it's yay big I can't just turn it over I can't just clear the material on my table turn it over and tell the machine to cut the other side because the machine doesn't know where your part is on the table so what I have to do is I have to normally start with a new piece of material say MDF and I have to create a pocket in the MDF for your part to sit in because now the CNC machine knows where I've just created that pocket on, on the machine bed. So when I insert your part upside down so I can mill the slot for you, the machine knows exactly where your part is and where you want the slot made. 
So although it's a simple process, double machining, it can take a lot more production time. So all I'm trying to explain in my documentation is ways to produce, sorry, ways to reduce the production time and obviously the cost of your frame. Even doing one-offs, the time is the same, really, but if you're doing lots of one parts, all you, all you do is once you machine the top part, then you have to make many pockets on your my sheet of MDF. Once I've cut your 20 parts, say, I then create 20 pockets on a sheet of MDF, turn it over, insert your parts, may have to screw the parts into the pocket to stop it moving, machine the other side, and then we're done. So it's, it's not a difficult part, but I'm just trying to highlight things that I'm receiving where, when I've had discussions on Skype with people, they've actually realized what's involved in the manufacture of their parts and they've redesigned their part to reduce production costs. So that's, sorry to, to um, <laughs> talk on a little bit, the whole idea of my document is to help you guys get a cheaper frame cost. Doesn't mean to say it's gonna be a cheap design, we're lowering the manufacturing costs. Um, so I hope you find the document of interest. If you've got anything to add, or you want to share anything with the community, please add a comment to the bottom. If it's a valid point, and I feel yes, it can help people and certainly start reducing costs for people, I will add it into the document. The document have a date on it, so we all know where we are and if, if revisions have been made. And hopefully we can help one another because, um, we all like an easy life at the end of the day, and if I can make your life easier, then I'm doing my job properly. So, that's Andy um, from GAA Tech. Uh, we specialise in, as I think you've probably gathered, uh, CNC machining, FR4, G10, which is pretty much a simmer, although FR4 is a fireproof, and carbon fibre, and other laminates. Um, take a look at my site, it is under construction. I hope to have my online shop up and running very very soon it's not going to be your normal online shop selling speed controllers motors this that and the other it's going to be selling fr4 g10 there's going to be a few bits and pieces on there like um nylon nuts bolts and washers stainless steel screws three mil 2.5 mil nylon nuts etc a few um XT60s, XT90s, the small basic things that while you're ordering the FR4 you might want to order a few bits to help you assemble but I don't intend to go down the hobby route my specialist field is going to be dealing with you guys getting your design out of the computer and into your hands because you can't beat um, touching the product. Um, I've got a stack of FR4 just down here you might have seen it in a, a Facebook post I've just had uh, Two and a half thousand pounds worth of uh, black FR4 delivered. I have a stock of um, 1.6 mil, 2, 2.4, 3, and 4 mil, all in black. I also have a limited supply of 1.6 mil in white and red. And the reasons that was ordered because those two colours match the arms of the DJI. Um, flame wheel products so I can manufacture products to match that and also the the red does look quite sexy if you put it onto a quad frame uh, or, 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 or a mini um, quadcopter etc um, the red is a, quite a vibrant red um, so that's me I'm going to sign off this time I've waffled on long enough please have a look at the document if you've got any comments to add please do add them we're all here to help one another it's Andy now signing out many thanks for watching cheers bye bye